Our next poet is a multidisciplinary visual artist, filmmaker, writer, and spoken word artist right here from Trenton, New Jersey. This poet inspires to create art that resonates with his audience's thoughts and feelings that they may not know how to express. He wants them to see his work and see themselves in it. Please put your hands together for Philip McConnell. Welcome him to the stage. Hello. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read two poems for you guys. Can y'all hear me back there? Yes. Yes, can you hear me over there? Yes. All right, let's get into it. So, the title of the first poem is called Icarus Complex. Little black boy, comet bound, falling from grace, as he is displaced by a place he once felt home in, a place he once let his thoughts roam in, only to think out loud and have them shot down by the crowd. Told not to let them fly too high for risk of touching Apollo's pride and joy, the boy, he scolded at his dreams unfolded. He is told, black boys don't fly. He is told, black boys can run, black boys can jump, but black boys no fly. See, that section of the sky is forbidden to touch for boys that look like they've already been kissed by the sun. So the boy borrows a formula from alchemy and he places his heels at the edge of sanity and with no thought, he falls into the unknown of what could be. See, he hopes to be carried by the winds of change into something better than the ideals that were instilled in him from birth. And below, he hears his family chant his name, only to have reality set in. See, those calls were less of a chant and more of a warning, and bang. Holes poked into ideas made to carry him out of his current situation, and he rockets to the ground. His head comet bound, his heart falling from grace, his mind displaced by the fate of those around him. And there he lay, broken wings on back, a holy figure. See, he longs for the sky and he longs for the warmth of the sun while his family longs to keep him from going too high for fear his wings may melt and that he may fall into the unforgiving sea of reality. And the boy never taught to swim, struggles. And while these ideas surround him and drown him, shackling him to the antiquated anchor of old beliefs, and again he is told, black boys don't fly. He is told black boys can run, black boys can jump, but black boys no fly. Thank you. Yes. So this one is a little older than the current one I just wrote. Right. Road. Red. <laughs> this one is called Growing Up. Growing up, I heard a phrase a lot. If I'm being 100% honest, this phrase probably explains why I form words in the fashion that I do. <clears throat> the phrase was, home is where the heart is. I mean, it's real simple, right? It's not a very profound ideal as an adult, but as a wide-eyed 12-year-old who falls in love with the sun every time it sets, or who falls in love with flowers that won't make it through spring to see summer, I wonder, why do I always fall in love with temporary things? I mean, home is where the heart is after all. Then I guess I must be homeless, huh? Because the home I wanted to invest in rests in smoldering embers, and now I stand outside in the clouds created by word storms, all because we, see, we didn't speak the same love language. See, I talked with my hands, and you closed your eyes and was blind to the fact that I would have done anything to build the home back. But honestly, maybe I lacked the foresight to see what was further than arm's reach. Maybe I couldn't look past the future I thought was in front of me. See, growing up, I heard this thing about soulmates and how love can take many forms and how through action love can be born and unbreakable bonds formed and a foundation built. Yet ours was crafted on the shifting sands of our situation. See, the base of us wasn't strong enough to withstand the winds of change. See, growing up, I was crushed under the weight of having the gift of a limited potential and having people fall in love with it rather than me. They see the face on the screen rather than the body behind it. The body composed of the things that make him, him. The motives that drive him, the failures that haunt him. Once they learn these truths, they grow to despise him as if my name became a synonym for disappointment. Growing up, I've seen this look on many faces. But your face was the only one that meant anything. See, growing up, I've always heard that love finds a way. And in many ways, I still kind of believe this to be true. 
I guess in some ways I still haven't grown up, while in others I feel like I have. Or maybe, just maybe, I'm still that 12-year-old kid outside chasing sunsets with a handful of flowers. Maybe. Thank you.